Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ryan here reviewing WWE Backlash. What a show this was. We concluded with Jinder freaking Mahal as WWE Champion. I still can't believe it. It really hasn't sunk in yet. Just a complete shock. I mean, I knew there was a small chance, but I couldn't, I just couldn't pick against Randy Orton. It seemed like it was a little too early, uh, but I will get to that towards the end. I want to go through the rest of the card first, um, but overall, I thought Backlash was a hell of a show. If I was to do our classic out of 4 rating scale, I'd probably give this show a 3.5 out of 4. I thought there was very little weaknesses in this show. I actually put up uh, a poll on Twitter just now uh, asking what you know, the Bite Club, what our, our audience thought of the show. So I'm going to, hopefully I remember to check in on that poll later because I want to give people time to fill it out and just kind of get a consensus what what everyone else's reaction is so far. And of course, wherever you're listening to this, either send us a tweet, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of WWE Backlash. But without further ado, I'll jump right into the card. The pre-show match, Aiden English versus Ty Dillinger uh, ended with, uh, of course, Ty Dillinger getting the pinfall. I really like what Aiden English is doing, but uh, it seems like he's he's got jobber status for now, which is unfortunate, but there's still hope for that. Obviously, Ty Dillinger, super talented guy. I'm glad they're building him too. So that's just where the focus is for now. And I thought this was a fair pre-show match. We opened the show surprisingly with Dolph Ziggler versus Shinsuke Nakamura. But I thought this was a very strong opening. And, you know, we talked a lot on the podcast that Shinsuke Nakamura, how they've kind of built him on SmackDown, has been a little questionable. Not really a fan of the artist tag and trying to do a little too much promo stuff with Nakamura. But this opening match I thought was great. Uh, this is the exact type of match we want to see. Dolph Ziggler uh, was a, a great first opponent, and I thought this was a very strong showing for Nakamura to start things off, so I really enjoyed it. Uh, and of course, Nakamura gets the win. Next up, we had the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. We had the Usos versus Brizongo. Uh, the funny thing about this match was, of course, th they showed the fashion files from last third, uh, last Tuesday, rather, with um, the the janitor gimmick that. Uh, Breeze was doing, and that was a very funny fashion files, probably their best one actually. And then uh, Breeze came out as the janitor for this match, and uh, you know, he was just mopping at the beginning, and you know, the Usos, you know, he was getting like tripped up over the mop, but then you know, I think it was Jimmy, he snapped the mop, and everyone got mad. The mop was super over in this match, but I thought uh, some people might have been like, oh, you know, they're not taking things too seriously and they're being played laughs played for laughs a little too much i actually appreciated the comedy in this match i had a lot of fun and then breeze kind of went away and he turned into like a grandma or whatever he's doing this undercover thing and you know what it worked for me because when it got down to brass tacks at the end of the match they got serious when they needed to and i appreciated the mix of comedy and just it was just a fun match i i was super entertained by it Things can't always be so serious all the time. And I thought this had enough comedy while also being a respectable championship match. I thought it was a good mix. Some people might disagree with me. And hey, that's, you know, everybody's got different tastes. I had a lot of fun. Uh, and the Usos ended up retaining in this match, which seems like it was probably the right move. Brizongo... I think, are becoming a super strong team, though, and I want to see this feud continue. Next up, we had Baron Corbin versus Sami Zayn. Another strong match. Uh, Sami Zayn gets a shocking win. I really, It really feels like, you know, you're not sure, is Baron Corbin becoming the new Bray Wyatt, where it's like, this guy's got so much potential, but he seems to be losing a lot? I'm not so sure. But then again, Sami Zayn's another guy who, I mean... Everybody loves Sami Zayn. Let's give the guy a win once in a while. So it was also really nice to see Sami Zayn win. So you're kind of torn in that respect. But I thought this was a good match. I mean, Sami Zayn, this guy always sells like he's dead. He, this time it was the back. 
He was selling his back injury. And I mean, this guy, like, I feel like Sami Zayn just may be the guy, like a lot of people might attribute Dolph Ziggler as the guy who's like the best at selling. I, I give it to Sami Zayn. This guy always seems like he's dead every single match and then somehow fights his way back into it. So I really enjoyed this. Strong showing from both of these guys. Sami Zayn gets the win. Next up, we had the six-woman tag match. So we had the welcoming committee versus Becky, Charlotte, and Naomi. And this is where I would say, you know, like, it wasn't bad. I don't think there was a single bad match on the card. I just don't think this was anything that special. Uh, I do appreciate that the welcoming committee did get the win. Also, Becky Lynch had some crazy hair going on, but I, you know what? I kind of dig it. A lot of people on Twitter I saw weren't huge fans of it. I thought it was pretty good. So anyway, yeah, not too much to say other than I was really happy to see the welcoming committee win. So it really seems like that they might be an established group that's going to stick around for a little while. We know the whole Becky Charlotte and uh, Naomi thing's probably not going to like last very long. It doesn't seem like that. So we'll, we'll have to see. It's not really clear where things are going to go from here. But at least the, the team that's actually trying to be a faction won. Because if they didn't win here, that group is dead in the water. And I actually kind of like that group. So I'm, I'm glad that's going on. Next up, we had a hell of a match between Kevin Owens and AJ Styles. These guys, I mean, this was a brutal match. There was some, you know, suplexes onto the the ring apron. Uh, you know, uh, AJ Styles just um, was getting his leg, you know, his knee, his leg worked over by Kevin Owens. He was doing the ankle lock, single leg crab, tons of stuff, making it real look really nasty. I mean, this is a hell of a match. AJ couldn't hit the phenomenal forearm because of the injury that he's selling. Uh, these guys tore the house down, I thought. And they ended it in a very clever way, which I, I, I did really appreciate. And, you know, you can do these DQ finishes, these count out finishes. And oftentimes they feel really cheap and it just feels like it doesn't feel like a satisfying conclusion. And sure, this count out doesn't feel like this is the end of this feud. But I thought it was very cleverly done where Owens put AJ Styles' leg through the announce table, the, the kind of the pocket that's there for the TVs, and AJ Styles' leg got cut up, um, not cut up, but caught up in the wires, thus kind of making him not be able to get in the ring in time, and Owens wins by count out. So it wasn't like there was interference or any kind of BS that they threw in. It was something clever that Kevin Owens did that kind of made him outsmart AJ to get the win. So I thought that was really cool. Moving on to Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan. This is a match I actually forgot was on the card. I was like, oh, it's going to be kind of early before we get to the main event. But yeah, this match was kind of another point of I don't think it was a bad match. But I just don't feel like the crowd was super into it. I mean, there wasn't a ton of build for this. I mean, Eric Rowan got the match on Talking Smack. It seems like they're just trying to figure out, like they had just figured out what they wanted to do with Eric Rowan. And Luke Harper, who had a ton of momentum a couple months ago, hasn't really gotten much recently. So uh, I didn't think this was a bad match at all, but it just didn't, you know, it didn't have the build up behind it. So it was difficult to really be fully invested. That being said, Luke Harper got the win, which is nice, but at the same time, you're like, well, they're really trying to do something with Eric Rowan, too, so it's kind of like, either way, either, like, whoever wins, it is kind of a tough loss for the other guy, but that being said, Luke Harper is definitely the guy that you want to see continue and prosper because the guy's super talented. Finally, we get to our main event, Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. And Randy versus Jinder, man. Jinder did the impossible. A guy who was a jobber basically a month ago is now WWE Champion. I mean, has anyone gotten this fast of a track to the WWE Championship from where their stat established status was, you know what I mean? Like we've seen people 
become WWE champion very quickly, but from a jobber to getting a push to WWE champion, I don't know if anyone's done it quite like Jinder Mahal has. It's unbelievable. I thought it was a good match. This is a good showing from Jinder. I thought the uh, Singh brothers played a very cool part. I like the fire from Randy Orton at the beginning of this match. It just really worked, and the crowd was super into it. It was not uh, what I expected at all for a crowd to be this invested. You think Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal, the crowd's going to dump all over it, but Chicago gave them an awesome main event, and I think the crowd being as into it as they were was what made this match really work. Just everything really worked. I mean, it was hilarious when Orton was disposing of the Singh brothers, and he, you know, he threw one... He backdropped one on the announce table. He went over to do the other one. The guy, like, flipped over, landed really bad. And you could see Orton's face like, ooh, that was nasty. And then, you know, he did the double DDT to both of them. Just this this match worked, surprisingly. And, and wow, it's just gender is champion. So we are going to see how this plays out. I mean, this is just crazy. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts about this. What do you think of Jinder Mahal as champion? I mean, this is a big risk by WWE to have a guy become champion this quickly. You know, you could think they could do some sort of, you know, dusty finish where they could continue the program for the next pay-per-view just to like not jump in and commit to Jinder so quickly, but they are all in on this guy. This was super shocking and I'm willing to give the dude a chance I mean, got to make sure you pass those wellness tests, but you know what? It's working. He's a true heel in an era where it's tough to be a true heel, and I know they're playing off of a very easy trope, but it works. So anyway, that is my thought on WWE Backlash. Like I said, it was a very entertaining show. Uh, aside from a couple of matches that I felt were on the weaker side, I thought it was just, you know, tons of great matches, a lot to like about this pay-per-view, and it ends in a pretty shocking way. So make sure to let me know, uh, let me know what you guys thought of WWE Backlash. If you're listening on YouTube, leave a comment. If you're listening elsewhere, just, you know, send us a tweet, let us know your thoughts. We love to hear from you guys and like to get your feedback. On this show, I'm going to go check the uh, the Twitter poll right now to see what the consensus is from uh, our Twitter followers. And it looks like right now uh, we have 31% saying it was a great show, giving it a 4 out of 4. 30% giving it a good show. 26 at just okay and 13 bad. So it is a mix there, but we do have over 60% giving it a 3 or a four so most people agree that this was a solid pay-per-view and a solid showing from wwe so thank you guys for listening Uh, i want to remind you guys if you want to show some love for what we do uh you can head over to our patreon and uh, there's a ton of great things ton of good perks for supporting us the best way to support us you know the uh, what we do on this channel, and of course, our weekly podcast, which you can catch every single Wednesday on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and other podcasting platforms. So yeah, the best way to support us, head over to patreon.com slash bite that gets you uh, for as little as a dollar, you can get a raw and uncut video version of the podcast that it, only patrons get to see. So patreon.com slash bite that. And uh, we, of course, like to thank our gold patrons. That's one of the perks is that we thank them in our videos on YouTube. So we, we'd like to thank at this time Edward Enright, Joe Wingdenling, Overcooked Bacon, Alex Servino, Liam Vincent, Dominic Diaz, Kevin LaFleur, Barney Johnson, Paul Loban, Oliver Batista, Peter D., and Ashley Hudson, Tony Meyer, Bo Segrist, Derek Wilson, and Nicole Toronto. I thought I was down there for a second. I had a couple more names. So thank you to all of them. Thank you guys for listening. Let me know your thoughts on Backlash, and we'll see you Wednesday with our full thoughts on Backlash Raw and SmackDown this Wednesday. See you guys then.